So in the last video, we built an image from a Docker file and we ran a container from it. So that's all very well. I'll exit from that container, but of course, building a container that can run a Java compiler isn't particularly useful. What we really want to do is we want to run some kind of an application inside that container. Now, the other file that I gave you in from the practicals and code folder was this jar file called testprogram.jar. And it's a really basic program. You can run it using java-jar testprogram.jar, or at least you can, assuming you have a Java development kit installed in your host environment. And very basic this, it runs forever, so it's simulating a daemon type process and it's going to output the current date and time every five seconds and it will keep doing that until you cancel with control c so not very exciting but i think it would be really good if we could somehow build a container that will run this service continually well we've pretty much done all of the work that we need. We've already defined a container in our Docker file, which has a Java development kit fully installed. All we really need to do is somehow get this jar file into that container and make it execute. How can we do that? It's actually pretty simple. If you open up your Docker file in any decent text editor, and the command that we're looking for is copy. And this will transfer local files from your host system into the container. The file that we're wanting to transfer is test-program.jar. And we can and we can reference that directly. Now we don't need any kind of folder names or dot forward slashes and so on. And the reason for that is if you remember back to when we run the build. The very important parameter at the end is the dot, which means that the so-called build context for this Docker file, for this image, is this folder here. And what that means is that all of the files in this folder and any subfolders are visible to the Docker file. And it's important to recognize that no other files will be. It's absolutely no good thinking that in here you can do a forward slash and reference some folder on your operating system. It's only files inside this folder and any subfolders that will be visible to the Docker build. And then the second parameter is, the, is a reference to in what folder do we want to put it on on the file system inside the container. Now, of course, that's entirely up to you where you put it in the container. And I think it would be worth thinking about where do we want this jar file to live? We've just downloaded this Ubuntu image and I don't have a very good feel for what's actually inside that container. So I suggest what we do is do a Docker container run. In fact, I can recall the previous command. So I'm running interactively my image as it stands so far, and that's going to drop me into a bash shell. Now, if I print the working directory, you'll find that we're actually in the root folder. If we do an ls, it's a regular Linux file structure. But if I go into the home, home folder, which is where the user accounts would be, you'll find that there are actually no users already configured on this system. So it's a very bare file system and we can really do anything we want with it. There's several places we could put our Java file. We could place it under the opt folder, which I think is for optional software. There's also the user folder or the USR folder, I should say, which is for read only system wide binary files. Now, if you think about it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to install this Java program into this container kind of permanently. So I think it feels like it makes sense for this to go into the USR folder. So I'm already in there actually. So if we look in there, there's a bin. So there's a bin folder in there, which has got all of the basic tools. There's a local folder, 
which itself has a bin directory. I think this is probably the sensible place to put it. This is for local installations. In other words, binaries that, that, are, that are not part of the standard Linux distribution. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put my Java file in slash USR slash local slash bin. So I could simply, I could simply specify the folder directly like that. And I could, if I wanted to change the file name, another way of doing it. And this gives me a good opportunity to show you. There is a command called work DIR. This allows you to specify the working directory user local bin. And the benefit of that is that means any future commands such as the copy command and some of the commands that we're going to see later will now all work relative to that directory. So that cleans things up a bit in a complicated Docker file. For us, we can just put in now a dot to say that it's going to go in the working directory. So we're almost there with a the working Docker file now. We're not actually running the Java file yet, but I think it would be worth trying to build this image and see what happens. So I'll exit from the previous container and just rerun the Docker build. We should have it on our command history. So can you see there that many of these steps didn't need any work to be done because the, the layers were already in the cache, but then we had this new instruction to set a work directory. It's then copied and that worked okay and it successfully built an, Im an image. So the big difference now is if I recall the run command, that's looking fantastic. Do you notice that when we run, when we now run this image, we're not in the root anymore. We've been dropped directly into that working directory. And if I do an LS, fantastic. We have our Java file in place.